Hey there! Welcome to Hobie on YouTube. I have a new addition for my World War II U.S. military pocket knife collection. I'm pretty excited to have this piece because it's one of the few remaining types I didn't already have. And this type of knife holds a certain personal connection with me. So I'll tell you about that in a minute, but first let me get it out of the case and we'll have a look at it. Stay tuned! So what I have here is your typical 3 and 3 8 inch four bladed utility scout type knife. Um, bone handles, all steel. It's very similar to the Army Engineers knives that are so common, except for this one is marked MDUSN, and that stands for Medical Department of the U.S. Navy, or more formally known as the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery. This knife was made by Camillus, um, and some other knives for the Medical Department of U.S. Navy were made by Cutmaster. They don't have the banner shield here, but they do have a blade etch that says MDUSN, and some were made by Imperial. Um, they have neither a shield or blade etch, but they have a tang stamp that reads MDUSN. Now these knives are hard to get. And this one is in particularly good shape, so I want to run through it here in a minute and let you see how nice it is. But um, there is a document online that shows Camillus contracts from World War II for their different military knives and their production numbers. And so I'll put an image of that up on the screen. And uh, you may not be able to read this, but between the years of 1942 and 1944, Camillus produced 80,400 of these. And while that sounds like a big number, when you consider that they made over three and a quarter million uh, knives like this for the Army, Army Engineers knives, and they made over two and a half million knives uh, in total, four bladed knives for the Navy, um, you can see that that's just a small fraction of these type of knives that they made in World War II. As a matter of fact, it's less than one and a half percent. So these are kind of hard to find when they do pop up. They're usually sought after pretty hard and uh, go for a pretty good price. I think I got a deal on this one uh, based on its condition. I have cleaned it, uh, but there was a lot to work with. So I don't know a lot about my World War II military history. Um, so I'm going to read to you um, the principal services of the medical department of the U.S. Navy. Uh, the medical department was charged with care of sick and wounded men and animals still used during World War II and transportation necessary for their evacuation and hospitalization. Prevention of disease, including direction and supervision of measures of public health among inhabitants of occupied territory, sanitation, inspection of meals, foods, and dairy products, and preparation and proper disposal of medical records. So those are all the things that the Medical Department of the U.S. Navy did, or the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery. And I think just about any personnel of the Medical Department of U.S. Navy could have had one of these knives, but they may also have been issued to a medical corpsman who accompanied the uh, Marines during combat in the Pacific. And uh, they might have been part of a kit uh, of other medical supplies issued for field service. By the way, you can find this knife in Michael Sylvie's book, The Complete Book of U.S. Military Pocket Knives, on page 90. Here it is, the Camillus with the banner shield, and he also pictures the Cutmaster, which has the MDUSN as a blade etch, no shield. And on the opposing page, you can see the Imperial version, where the MDUSN is a tang stamp. And I believe I might have missed mentioning one earlier. If you flip over here, yeah, Utica had one as well. MDUSN with the banner shield, and I guess you could tell theirs by the spiral all. It's also interesting to note that I don't know of any other of these uh, engineer type knives in World War II that were made for any other medical departments of uh, any other branches of service like, um, you know, the Army Medical Service Corps or something. Seems like the, the Navy 
uh, is the only one. And, and there are knives that just simply say USN for U.S. Navy. Uh, you know, ones that say USA for U.S. Army, USMC for U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, but as far as I know, this is the, uh, the only one uh, that has anything to do with a medical department, just for the U.S. Navy. So yeah, so um, all steel, steel bolsters. This one, I believe, has a steel bale and uh, steel liners, carbon steel. So being all steel, that would make this knife somewhere from the years, you know, 1942 to 44, when brass was not available. Um, it does carry Camillus's four-line tank stamp. And while it's lightly stamped in this knife, it's very clear. So nice stamping. So here's your main blade. We know these knives inside and out, right? But uh, it's full. I haven't sharpened it. it uh, it's not very sharp, but I'm not sure that it ever really got sharpened. So uh, I think I'll just leave it alone. Has some light scratches on it, but it still has some of its original sheen. It's very unusual for a steel knife from World War II. Knife's got great snap. Screwdriver cap lifter. Can opener. Just everything's in really good condition. It had it had some rust spots. I had to take some rust off. Um, you may be able to just leave that open. We'll show you down inside when we're all done here. There's the all. Doesn't look like it's really ever been used. Still sharp on the end. Yeah, so let's open this back up. Not bad, huh? Steel liners, old carbon steel springs, a service knife from the military of World War II. I don't think this one saw much field use, honestly. Again, great action on this knife. All the tools that should have strong spring tension, like particularly the screwdriver and the can opener, really do, but they're not nail breakers. It's, got, it's nice and tight across the back, and I haven't seen any chips or splits in these uh, bone scales. So it's a real fine example of a pretty hard to get knife. All right, so what's my personal connection to a type of knife like this? Well, my late father-in-law, who I came to love very much, was in the US Navy. He joined right up as soon as his parents would let him at age 18 with his brother. Uh, he became a medic and was stationed in Guam. I'll show some pictures there. You can see him as a young man in his uniform. You can see him with some of his buddies there in Guam. You can see him when he came back and what a man they turned him into. So yeah, he came back and he went to school on the GI Bill, became a doctor, practiced medicine, in private practice all his life. Along the way, he got married, had six children, uh, owned a farm. He was just a great guy. This is going to be it for new videos from me for a while, so you might want to use this opportunity to get caught up on some of my more recent videos if you haven't seen those already. I think this summer I've put out about 13 videos, and there's some good stuff in there. Uh, if you're new to the channel, over the years I've actually produced hundreds of videos, and they are arranged in helpful playlists such as, you know, military pocket knives from World War II, uh, vintage Swiss Army knives, official Boy Scout knives of America, winger knives, boker knives, case knives, etc. So dig around in there and see if there's something you like. And by the way, if you like one of my videos, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, that's more important to me than just about anything else because of the way that YouTube works. You know, the more likes a video gets, the higher it's placed in search results. The higher it's placed in search results, the more additional views it gets. The more views it gets, the more fractions of a penny they pay me. So maybe after a month or so, I can get another nice knife to bring you on the channel. But whatever you'd like to do, um, I do appreciate you watching this video. Thanks for your support. Hey, and as always, have fun collecting.